my dear readers, listeners, and of course friends. Imagine for a moment, if you will, the world that once was, not one dominated by Homo sapiens, but shared. A rich tapestry of existence with our hominid cousins, Neanderthals with their robust frames and keen minds, the enigmatic Denisovans, and the diminutive but doughty Homo floresiensis. These were not mere brutish figures in the margins of prehistory, but beings endowed with complex emotions, rich social bonds, and profound existential experiences much like ourselves. Let us cast our minds back to those ancient landscapes, lush and wild, where these creatures lived, loved, struggled, and ultimately vanished. In their time, they faced the raw realities of nature with communal solidarity and an emotional depth that should move us, their distant progeny, to profound recognition. Consider the Neanderthal, often maligned as a mere shadow in our evolutionary narrative. This cousin of ours buried their dead with flowers, their graves a silent testament to the solemn rites of farewell. Here lies evidence not of primitive savagery, but of profound humanity an understanding of loss, and a respect for the departed that speaks to an existential awareness mirroring our own. Visualize a Denisovan elder passing down knowledge to a youngling through the delicate craft of tool-making, each careful instruction not merely a lesson in survival but a sacred transmission of cultural identity and community belonging. These moments, as ephemeral as they might have been, were building blocks of a culture, a civilization that hummed with life's full spectrum, from the visceral thrill of the hunt to the quiet grief of mourning. And let us not forget the small, isolated world of the Homo floresiensis, whose very existence on the remote island of Flores speaks to the incredible adaptability and resilience of our shared lineage. Picture the tender scene of a Flores mother, her touch gentle as she soothes her child under the canopy of a starlit sky, her lullabies echoing in the crisp night air, weaving the fabric of emotional continuity that binds all maternal love. Yet for all their vibrancy and vitality, these relatives of ours slipped into the shadows of extinction, their voices fading from the earth, leaving us the sole inheritors of the hominid legacy. How tragic that the vast expanses of time and the ruthless march of evolution should so completely erase these kindred from our midst reducing their once thriving existences to mere fragments of bone and artifact. Thus we must now, as heirs to this lonely dominion, bear the weight of a profound responsibility to remember and honour these lost families of ours. It is a task of not only scientific or historical significance, but of moral and philosophical necessity. To forget them would be to ignore the very pastiches that tie us to the broader narrative of life on this planet, to sever the threads that connect us to the natural world and to our own humanity. So let us then dedicate ourselves to the task of remembrance. Let us speak of them in our stories, teach of them in our schools, and reflect on their lives in our moments of quiet contemplation. Let us acknowledge that in their time they were as real as we are now, their fears and joys as poignant, their lives as deserving of dignity and recognition. In honoring them, we affirm the shared bonds of all sentient life, recognizing in their long-lost eyes a mirror to our own souls. Let this be our tribute, not merely etched in the sterile annals of scientific discourse, but woven into the very essence of our cultural and spiritual understanding of what it means to be human. By remembering them, we not only resurrect the echoes of their laughter and the shadows of their struggles, but also pay profound respect to the love and life they shared forever weaving their lost stories into the sacred fabric of our shared humanity.